In today's episode, we'll be basically talking about, um, you know, DC Comics, DC Films, what could be, you know, how they should do things, but, you know, <clears throat> so... One thing that I I realize with DC Comics and stuff is that they're still trying to figure things out. <laughs> they're still trying to figure out what to do with their films and stuff. And for me, this is like one episode I like to like say how they could do things, like, you know, what they should do. But yeah, you know. so that's basically what this episode is going to be. Like, I just really. Really, just want to throw out ideas like how they should do stuff. So, anyway. um, I don't know where to start. <laughs> you know, because they done like. <clears throat> I mean, so far with their their films and stuff, like they. You know, they started off with, like, uh... It's kind of weird over their DC Extended Universe. Like, they started out with so much potential, like Man of Steel, then Dawn of, Ju- Dawn of Justice, then Suicide Squad. And one, you know, like, they started out pretty strong, in my opinion. I know there's going to be some people like, they started out pretty weak, you know, with... Man of Steel and all that, but when you look back at it, like they kind of had a very strong start, in my opinion. Like good stuff, and they, I don't know what went wrong. Yeah, you know, for them. You know, for, for me, like, I I look forward to hopefully seeing the, you know, Snyder Cut, the, the Zack Snyder's Justice League, as they're calling it now. And with that, with that, I look forward to seeing what could possibly be sort of like the reboot for the DCEU. That's what they're calling it. On it now, like they call it the possible revival of it, and there's always going to be those people who will be like, you know, it's not a revival of it, you know, it's just, you know, it's just that it's their own, you know, it's just sort of like goodbye to, <laughs> like goodbye to the, you know, Snyder first, but. I mean, who knows? I mean, like, you know, the future films they have, of course, Wonder Woman coming out in August. Um, August of next year is Suicide Squad, you know, the Suicide Squad. I don't even know why they didn't just fucking rename it. <laughs> like, I don't know why they just didn't rename it. But it entered uh, post-production, so... Uh, Matt Reeves, The Batman... The Batman. <laughs> um, for October 2021. And December 2021 is Black Adam, which is in pre production mode. Of course, in development, you have The Flash for 2022 of June. And you have Shazam November 4th of 2022. And Aquaman 2 2022 of December 16th. So, you got those films. And, of course, there's, like, other projects in development, like the Amazons, you know. Patty Jenkins wants to do a movie focused on the th- uh, the Amazon race and the Themyscira. 
you have Batgirl, which is honestly, in my opinion, really nowhere like on the surface. Like I would love to see them do an HBO Max series of Batgirl. Like I think that it could work in a way, or do sort of like a spin-off series of Bad Girl for Titans, but you're going to have Oracle, of course, in it, so you got Blue Beetle, which I honestly think Blue Beetle and Booster Gold should be just one movie instead of like two different movies, in my opinion. That's just kind of how it should be. Like, I would love to see them do like a Blue Beetle, Booster Gold comedy film, but, you know, that's just my opinion of it. So, Cyborg. <laughs> of course, I... Of course, in April 2020, Ray Fisher confirmed that there are continue continues to be development on the project stating that the character will develop to be comfortable in his new role as a superhero and come into conflict conflict with those who have an interest in his technology makeup I honestly think with Cyborg it could be you know finally a revival of the character and the project and the film because Zack Snyder, of course, revealed that Cyborg is the heart of the film, and that you will finally see, um, <clears throat> you know, his scenes in the film. Like, I remember seeing like Snyder post like a video of uh, Victor Stone playing football and stuff, and. I mean, there are scenes in the film that I wish they would have just left in there. But, of course, you know, with DC and you get Joss Whedon, you can't have dramatic um, character moments and stuff. You have to have comedy. You can't have dramatic you know, character moments that you see a character break down and be rebuilt. You know, you can't have that. You, you can't. It's gotta be fun. It's gotta be like the Avengers. It's gotta be fun and exciting and stuff. And, uh, but anyway, I know there's gonna be some people who are like, have you seen, you know, Infinity War and Endgame? <laughs> uh, I seen Infinity War. And man, that was a long ass film in theaters. Uh, Endgame, I didn't get to see. I still haven't seen it. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I have no interest in seeing it, so. I know Iron Man dies. <laughs> I just have no interest in seeing the film, so. You know, that's just my thought of it. Uh, Deadshot. Of course, Will Smith, you know, played Deadshot. Uh, there's... A this was like back in 2016 like they announced that they were doing a film centered around Deadshot uh, Floyd Lawton Deadshot Will Smith of course was going to reprise his role from Suicide Squad and that the story was in development that was reported in September 2018 February 2019 Smith left the role due to scheduling conflicts and by March Idris Elba was cast to replace him in the Suicide Squad but the character was written out in the team-up film, so that Smith can reprise his role, and Idris Elba, it's unknown who he's playing. Um, death, uh, sorry, Deathstroke. Uh, April 2020, Evans announced that the project has been delayed, and he said he's no longer actively involved in the development that the filmmaker revealed that, uh, that the story was... The story was developed to portray the character and his origin. This is Gareth Ed Evans, who is a talented, you know, director, writer, editor, and stuff. It's kind of a shame that they never got to. Deathstroke would be like one character. I wish they would just do a film, you know. 
you had Joe Maganello, who had like one scene in uh, Justice League. And um, I think there's going to be like a scene that was not used in Snyder's you know film that's going to be in the Zack Snyder Justice League. So that'd be exciting. Um, yeah. Uh, Gotham City Sirens, of course. Uh, you have Margot Robbie as Harley. You have Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Um, it's unknown who's going to be Poison Ivy. But for me, I, I kind of like to see them do... Gotham City Sirens, but at the same time, I want to see them establish, you know, uh, Catwoman. I want to see them do, you know, the Batman film, then see how Catwoman is, then see how Zoe Kravitz could carry the character of Catwoman, you know. I don't want to see them rush it, you know. Like, Gotham City Sirens is a big, big story, you know, with it just isn't, you know, centered around one character that makes an entire team. Birds of Prey. Case in point. But the Sirens is about three iconic characters that have personality, character. They can stand on their own two feet. They are not being carried by one character that you get tired of seeing in a film. You know, I mean, if you wanted to see that character in a film, why didn't you just make that film a solo film about that character? You know, <laughs> so, um, you know, for me, I would love to see, um, you know, I would love to see them handle Birds of Prey properly. I would love to see them, you know, have the characters have a relationship you know with each other but at the same time they have like conflicts adventurous and stuff and I would love to see that but you know who knows what they'll do uh, Green Lantern Corps of course we're doing that for the HBO Max series Harley Quinn and Joker that film is probably dead on arrival um, you know so <laughs> anyway uh, one film I wish they would just make and get it over with is Lobo the Bounty Hunter. Now, I, w I want to talk about this one. There's, um, Of course, I, I really want to talk about this one. This is about the Harley Quinn Birds of Prey. And the difference between that and Lobo the Bounty Hunter is you look at, like, Birds of Prey, and I, I talked about this before in past episodes, where um, Birds of Prey had the look and market of a PG-13 film, but it was rated R. And they should have made Birds of Prey a PG-13 film. Because you already established Harley Quinn as a PG-13 character. And that she is not fit to be a rated R character. And that to me was the problem why the film bombed. I mean, I know a lot of people say the story was awful and cheesy and dumb. But, you know, the thing is, you look at Harley Quinn, you look at she's a PG-13 character. She's not this Deadpool type rated R film and Lobo the Bounty Hunter would have worked in that direction of a rated R Deadpool type film because mainstream audiences mainstream mainstream audiences don't know who is Lobo <laughs> nobody nobody knows who Lobo the Bounty Hunter is I'm sure if you say to a DC Comics movie audiences, Lobo. They'd be like, who? 
And that's the point of it. Like, they should have just made Lobo the Bounty Hunter rated R. I mean, they should have just made the movie, you know, and make it rated R and stuff. And they should just let Harley Quinn be a PG... Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, or Birds of Prey as it's on the DVD covers. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of Harley Quinn. It should have just been a PG-13 film. It probably would have made a decent amount of money. Probably better than what it made in theaters and, you know, stuff. But that was the problem with, you know, that's the problem with, you know, my thought of, you know, Birds of Prey. You know, it's just, it should have been PG-13. It should have just been better written. (laughs) Um, But I, I think if they ever do another Harley Quinn film, which, I mean, they're going to do another one, because it's Harley Quinn, you already have the market, and you have already the the loyal fan base that will show up to it, I mean, they showed up to, you know, Birds of Prey, they will show up again, um, they should just take pages and notes from the, hey there, good luck, thank you. You know what? If they ever do another Harley film, a Harley Quinn film, they should just take pages from the animated series, season one in particular, <laughs> and work from that. Like work what they, you know, did with the character in Birds of Prey, and just work off of you know that. Um. You know, I'm. I mean, I even said it. Like they should just brought in characters that people heard of but never seen like Condiment King like if you bring in Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia to play Condiment King I would have paid to go see that film (laughs) you know and bring in Danny DeVito as the old man in the wheelchair the old man in the chair you know I would have paid money to see that but they didn't you know that's the thing of it and I think, you know, if they ever do another Harley Quinn film, they should just bring in some of the characters that people wanted to see. Like, people wanted to see the Joker in it. I mean, are you going to get Jared Leto back as Joker? No. He's gone. He went over to the Spider-Man universe. But you could bring in an actor to play the Joker, like um, Adrian Brody. I always thought he would have been a great Joker, in my opinion. Um, you could bring him in to play the Joker and not do the Joker and Suicide Squad, not all the tattoo Joker, but you could like change it up a bit. You could make it, you know, rewritten like the Joker that Harley was hanging out with with the tattoos was just a poser and the real Joker is what we all know what he looks like, the crazy, you know, Joker. <laughs> You know, but with no tattoos and all that shit, like no damage tattooed on his forehead. But you know, you could, you know, have the Joker look like the classic Joker that we all know and love. That's what they should have done. Well, that's what they should do. Um. And he just grabs the Joker that with the tattoos, and he's like, this poser, and he just shoots him, and that's how it ends. But, <laughs> you know, that's what they should do. Like, And the whole film could be about Joker versus Harley. Like, you get this whole hilarious battle of turf, like... Um, it's you know they could take it from Birds of Prey where they reveal that. Uh, spoiler alert for those who didn't probably see the film. Uh, Black Mask dies. He no does he die? I think he does die. <clears throat> and I mean he dies like the most hilarious way I think. But they what? So. Anyway,
Yeah, he's killed by Helena. And something just lying on my roof. <laughs> Uh, yep, yeah, Zaz is, uh, last of her family killers. I'm sorry. Yeah, so he dies. Victor Zaz dies, which kind of sucks. And, yep, Black Mass dies of a, uh, grenade detonates and kills him. So, they could work off of that, yep. <clears throat> Try to remember Birds of Prey. Like, I seen it once, I'm just, I immediately forgot about it. <laughs> I watched it once, like, and I just totally, like, forgot. It was kind of funny, though. Like, my my cousin, um, she was talking about the film. She's seen it in theaters. I was just like, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, my nose is kind of runny. She talked about, you know, she's seen it in theaters with her friends, and she just didn't really understand it. <laughs> And she was just like, I don't, she was, it was kind of funny though, she was like, I love the animated film, I, the animated series, I don't know why they just didn't make the movie like the animated cartoon. And I was just like, I was like, exactly, like, you know, like, you know, for me, I'm still waiting for, I'm still waiting for the, uh, you know, the Plastic Man movie. <laughs> That's like one movie I'm just like holding out for. It's just like they need to make it, you know, like and I know that like their big project they're they wanna do and I don't even know, um I know one thing that's kinda interesting was uh New Gods film's gonna be like interesting because It's just my opinion of it. I think it's going to be a really interesting thing because um, Tom King Tom King co-wrote the film, which is kind of weird. Like, I know it's, I know some people are going to find it weird, but it's just like you got Tom King who is <laughs> writing New Gods, but. But the the point I'm I'm making about the Harley Quinn, like if they ever do one, is I found out this one. This one's kind of interesting. This one's a funny uh, story. My youngest niece um, is a Harley Quinn fan, which I didn't even know. And how I found out was my sister sent me a Snapchat because my youngest niece ordered stuff on Amazon. She saved up her allowance and she ordered like some Harley Quinn stuff to add to her room. <laughs> she bought a Harley Quinn shirt, Harley Quinn blanket <laughs> to add to her room. I, I was just like, <laughs> it kind of made me laugh a bit. Um, and my sister was just like, this is what your influence does to people. <laughs> and I was just like, please, God, tell me she did not order that jacket that you see in the film that looks like something out of Taxi Driver. Like, it was just like one of those things. Like, I was just like, please, God, tell me she did not get that jacket. And it's nothing. It's people. Like, I, I mean, like, if you would wear that jacket in public, then, you know, good for you. Like. For me, I'd just be kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... You know, she didn't. But she just ordered, like, a blanket, a shirt. And she had the, uh... Seen in the background, she has, like, the Suicide Squad baseball cap that I bought her when we... When we went to Six Flags and she saw that hat at Six Flags. And she was just like, I can't wait to see this movie. I really... I really want this hat, and I was just like, "Do you want it? I'll buy it." Like, and she, you know, has the hat still to this day, which kind of surprised me, you know. And 
you know, she she watched the animated series Batman, and I take it like she just that's basically what the shirt and blanket was was just from the animated series like not the Margot Robbie movie like she just likes the classic Harley which I'm you know which I think is the best part you know of Harley Quinn and I I wish they would I think there's a problem with Harley and the oh hello Alfred (laughs) the cat Alfred is up in a tree He looks like Simba from The Lion King as he's climbing in that tree. (laughs) I don't even know what he's looking for. That's really cool. That's the thing I love about where I live is that watching these cats climb the tree is like... It's amazing. It's like watching like what you see in like the National Geographic about lions and stuff when they climb the tree and stuff. But anyway, the the point I was uh, anyway I got distracted <laughs> by the cat. But the problem I that I had with Birds of Prey and um, Suicide Squad was just that Harley did not look like the Harley Quinn from. The cartoons and stuff, and I know there's gonna be like some people point out like, well, she did wear the outfit and the one scene, but it's just like she didn't carry like, you know, like they didn't make like a costume that sort of paid tribute to the animated series. I mean, shit, like the comic books do, but the problem is like, why didn't they just? you know, carried into the film and stuff, you know, but anyway, you know, uh, I honestly, I, I wish they would make a Lobo the Bounty Hunter film, like, I just, I wish they would just make it rated R, like, do a rated R Lobo, like, that's what they should have done, and again, they didn't. So, anyway, so, anyway, let's get to uh, other news and stuff. (laughs) So, in cosmic book news, uh, this one saddens me, this story. Uh, Evil Dead is getting rebooted with a female protagonist. It's been announced that Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, Evil Dead movies are getting rebooted treatment with centering around centering on a female protagonist. It also sounds like Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell won't be involved in the flick, even though we guess the duo will most likely be a producer of some type form. They did do an Evil Dead reboot um, back in the day. They did like the horror movie, the the Evil Dead, which actually did really good at the box office and was really well received. It's just they didn't do the sequel. <laughs> but I I love. Bruce Campbell as Ash. And for those who don't know who Ash is, eh, that's a sad tragedy that you don't. Ash is one of those cool, badass characters that just has the awesome personality. And Bruce Campbell is that awesome personality. And I, I just, I always loved. Ash Williams, the Evil Dead, you know, character, and Ash vs. the Evil Dead TV show is really good. It sucks that they just didn't do another season because Stars is just fucking Stars. They ha- they can't do anything right. Um, you know, it 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 just. 
for me, it, it sucks that they they do reboots, and I that's one of the things I hate the most in horror movies is when they remake it or reboot it, and when they remake it, they fuck it up. Case in point: Rob Zombie's Halloween, and I'm a huge Rob Zombie fan. I love his music. House of Thousand Corpses is really good. The Devil's Rejects is a really good film, but his Halloween movie sucked. Like, his Halloween movies sucked badly. Like, if you ever want to know what a white trash version of Halloween looks like, then go see that movie. Go see his Halloween movies. You will get the whole fucking enchilada of white trash zombie... F- <laughs> white trash Halloween films. Yeah, you know, those, those movies suck. I'm sorry, they just suck. You know, even though he made up for it when he did the song Mars Needs Women, which is a good song, by the way. <laughs> um, but, you know, those movies just, those Halloween movies just sucked. And I seen the new one they did. Um, it kind of like rehashes like mixture of like the original and sort of kind of Halloween 2-ish, but they erased Halloween 2 from it. But it just, it was like a total rehashing of like H2O, like you know, you you see um, Lori years later, she's paranoid with guns, which is kind of ironic, because Jamie Lee Curtis hates guns, and (laughs) it's just uh, like, you know, but you know, like they can't do they can't do like remakes right when it comes to horror movies. But I mean, like Nightmare on Elm Street, like the best choice they got for like Nightmare on Elm Street was Jackie Earl Haley as Freddy Krueger. But the look of Freddy Krueger and the um, Nightmare on Elm Street remake just looked like shit. Instead of using like you know makeup and you know prosthetics and makeup like they did with Robert England instead they use CGI which was like a total fuck up on their part because when you do like CGI for like that it just looks like shit you know like they should have just done what they did with the original like the prosthetic and makeup like it I'm sure like a makeup artist who was like a great admirer or fan of like the original Nightmare on Elm, they could have, like, created something new and something different. But instead, like, they just were like, we're gonna do CGI, we're gonna CGI it. And it's like, you yeah, made it look like shit. <laughs> it was just... You know. Um, I, mean, I mean, of course you're not gonna get the classic Robert England look, because Robert England has that expression in, this, in the face that brings terror out in people when he puts on the Freddy Krueger makeup and all that, but Jackie Earl Haley is just like he's a damn good actor. Like I I I, I always said I will say this, if you would if I had the opportunity to make a Batman movie, Jackie Earl Haley would play Mad Hatter. Because he could play a creepy fucking person. (laughs) And Jackie Earl Haley is like, in one of my, you know, top ten favorite movies, The Bad News Bears, where he played Kelly Link. uh, And he was Watchmen. He was in Watchmen. He was uh, Rorschach in Watchmen. And he was, he knocked out of the ballpark with that one, man. Like, he just, he embodied that character. Like, he just embodied that character. And, you know, for me, like, he would, if he got to play, like, Mad Hatter in Batman, he would just, he would own that character. Like, he would just, he would bring out, like, so much creepy vibes into it. And, damn, like, that would be such an awesome role. Like, or that or Scarecrow. But Scarecrow, like, my top choice for Scarecrow is Robert England. Like, I always thought Robert England could play Scarecrow. 
the OG Freddy, like, he could, like, man, he would, he would terrify the shit out of people <laughs> if he played Scarecrow, like, oh. that, that's who I would pick to play Scarecrow, is Robert England and, uh, Matt Hatter, Jack Earl Haley, you know, and stuff, and, those are like my two picks for like what character you know what characters would be but um Bruce Campbell revealed that the reboot uh, reve- revealed the title to the reboot on Evil Dead Now also with the news that it won't have anything to do with the 2013 Evil Dead movie which had a female protagonist that Evil Dead Now will be directed by Lee Crone of uh, who is known for The Hole in the Ground. Never heard of it. Speaking with Empire and the Heroes issues, Ash himself, a.k.a. the ever-groovy Bruce Campbell. Because he always says groovy. (laughs) We're just getting off the phone with Lee Crone, who will be directing the next Evil Dead. He confirmed when asked whether it would be... Rather, there would be life in the old cabin in the woods. He called, he, it's called Evil Dead Now. Sam handpicked Lee. He did a cool movie called The Hole in the Ground. We're going to get that sucker out as soon as uh, particular. As Freddy Alvarez's Evil Dead 2013, this won't feature Ash... Uh, the one, this one will feature Ash, who has hung up the chainsaw and shotgun for perhaps the last time, and will be, by sounds of things, centered around a female protagonist. From their, from this point of view forward, they can have to stand on their own, which is fine and liberating, says Campbell. You could have different heroes, different heroines, in case this is going to be more, a little more dynamic. He added. We just won't. We just want to keep the current. Uh, the, we just want to keep the series current. And the manta, and mantra, really, is our heroes and heroines are just regular people. That's what's going to be continued. That kind of sounds like, no offense. It sounds like shit, in my opinion. I mean, you can't just have heroes be regular people. You have to make them dynamic. You have to make them stand out. And there's a lot of female characters that stand out. It's just like they, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's just like when you like, I, I, I know I keep going back to Batwoman, but when you fuck up Batwoman, <laughs> something's going on. I mean, you had, you know, Kate Kane. And they screwed that up, and now they're bringing in the new character, who is a woman who lives in a van with her plant, <laughs> who is who steals milk from an alley cat. What the fuck is that? <laughs> you know. And the thing is, they there goes Lilo to investigate everything. But they, you know, when you look at Birds of Prey, you have Harley Quinn, you have Black Canary, you have Huntress, I don't know how they fucked that up, you have Renee Montoya, who should be Batwoman in the Batwoman TV series, since Kate Kane's no more, in my opinion, and you have Cassandra Kane. Cassandra Kane is the one that aggravated me the most. Like, they just fucked that up. I mean, how do, how do you, in the comics, Cassandra Kane, who is the daughter of Bane, who is a dangerous fighter, who is, you know, a lot to a lot of people, the second best Batwoman to Barbara Gordon, I know a lot of people say Stephanie Brown, but Cassandra Cain, you know, you know, is a good, you know, great Batwoman. How do you take all that 
and turn the character into a street corner thief who ends up being kind of annoying in the film. Like, how do you do that? You know, just my thought and opinion of it. And I mean, that's the thing that kind of bothered me. That's what kind of bothers me, still bothers me. It's just, you know, with this movie, it's just they might as well, if it's going to be just regular people, they just might as well just make a sequel to the Evil Dead 2013 film. They just might as well just redo that or reboot it since, you know, it's been a while since we've seen it. You know, they might as well just redo the Evil Dead, you know, like the make it the original way. You know, but that's just my thought of it. Like, Sam Raimi, of course, is doing the, um, Uh, Sam Raimi, of course, is directing Doctor Strange 2 from Marvel, but a lot of one person wrote who wrote the article can't help but think of the title Evil Dead Now is similar to Marvel Comics Now, <laughs> which promotes PC culture and replaces the classic characters with politically correct characters. <laughs> um, one person wrote, so no Raimi, no Campbell, no Ash. Eh, never mind. So, that's kind of the sad part about it. It is just that, um, let's see. Spider Man 2 into the Spider Verse sequel is under production. So, it's in production now. So, anyway, <clears throat> so. Now, let's see what this question is. Who would you want to see play... Who would you want to see in the Superman sequel, Man of Steel 2, if they make it? Um, well, Brainiac, for one. <laughs> um, Brainiac would be, like, one character I would love to see and Man of Steel 2. Um... For the Joker, like, the Batman movie, like, I know they're talking about, like, a new Joker, uh, which, of course, I read the article where Matt Reeves is going to be bringing in a new Joker. In my opinion, like, I mean, I know everyone, I kind of knew it was going to be, like, it wasn't going to be Joaquin Phoenix, because I don't even know if they're making a sequel to the Joker movie, which I I'm, wouldn't be surprised if they do, but at the same time, I kind of I don't know what it is. Like after uh, rewatching the Joker movie, I just kind of don't want to see a sequel to it. As weird as that sounds, like the way it just ended, it just might as well just would have been like, um, ended like that, like like a perfect Elseworlds story where your mind is just thinking, like, what would Arthur Fleck be doing now? <laughs> um. You know, I just, I kind of don't want to see a Joker sequel. Like, I wouldn't mind, like, seeing, um, you know, a Batman movie set and set years after the Joker, like, and stuff. But at the same time, it's just, like, you kind of want to see that world of the, you know, Gotham and that one's just sort of be left alone. But at the same time, you know, people 
want to see what happens in it. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> but, you know, people just want to see a continuation of a good story. Um, but, you know, for me, I would love to see what top Todd Phillips would do with, like, uh, Victor Freeze, you know, or Batman. Like, he talked about wanting to do a Batman movie, a rated R Batman movie, you know, set in the universe of the Joker. I would love to see that, um, you know, but I would love to see, um, characters, you know, iconic villains and characters taken, you know, from the comics and be made into, like, a character-driven solo movie, like, I mean, Mr. Freeze would be a perfect, perfect perfect solo movie (laughs) and I just I can't help it I just I really really want to see a Mr. Freeze film I just want to see that movie like Bane would be great to see like I I, you know a Bane movie would be would be pretty cool like you know get Robert Rodriguez to make a Bane movie I know a lot of people would be like that's kind of batshit crazy to see, but if you ever watch Machete uh, or Sin City, Robert Rodriguez is a really fantastic director. Um, But I would love to see, like, a Bane movie with the same type of, like, making, you know, the same type of style as Machete was made. Um, You know, like, you know, that that would be really cool in my opinion um i would love to see you know um again i would love to see you know uh a general zod movie or kite man (laughs) uh kite man would be really cool uh again you know but yeah, I mean, those were, like, the two characters I would love to see, like, Freeze and Bane. Like, if you would do, like, a Bane movie where it's sort of, like, follows, like, his story, like, in the comics where he starts out as, like, a luchador wrestler, then, you know, he beats everybody and stuff like that. Like, like if you take that concept and you put it into, like, a, a concept of, like, he's at war with other gangs and stuff, and he starts his own gang, like, Saints Row type of thing. That would be really cool, but, again, they're saving Bane for the Batman sequel, supposedly. Uh, What I've read is just that Matt Reeves wants to bring Bane into Batman 2, uh, his Batman universe, then Joker would be saved for, I take it the third one, but I mean, like, if I was, like, a writer for those films, I would just sort of, like, plant the seeds for a Joker appearance. Like, I mean, like, if I... If I wrote the Batman films and stuff, like, I would just sort of, like, plant the seeds that the Joker exists. He's just, like, this urban legend type character. He's this, you know, urban legend that's out there, you know, type of thing. Um, and stuff like you just sort of see like these bits and pieces of references that Joker's there. You just don't see him. He just sees everything that's going on type <laughs> type of thing. That's what I think would be so cool is just that the Joker. The thing about the Joker is many people for you know sort of forget is Joker is really highly intelligent. A lot of people are just so sort of you know so used to uh, so, sorry so used to his crazy maniac behavior that he's crazy he's like a crazy dog but a lot of people don't realize this Joker is really smart he knows what he's doing <laughs> and he's you know and the thing about it is like many people forget is Joker is smart and equally dangerous as Batman. 
Yeah, if you look at Dark Knight, uh, Dark Knight film, Joker outsmarted Batman, <laughs> and in a way, sort of beat Batman at his own game. Like it was a battle of chess, and Joker sort of got Batman where he wanted him, and did all the damage. Like he killed Rachel, um, he destroyed Harvey Dent <laughs> and he won that was the craziest thing about it even though Batman caught him he was like laughing and saying we're going to do this forever you know and that, that's the craziest thing about it is just how smart the character was and I think that's what bothered people was just like they took a smart joker like Heath Ledger put out there and they brought in Jared Leto and just you know dropped the bar <laughs> and Joaquin Phoenix of course had to pick up the bar and raise it back up again so you know for me like I would love to see the joker and the movies I would love to see him come back and you know sort of take it back to where it should be to where Ledger left it and Phoenix sort of took that and did that but now it's time for somebody else to take the role and try to do something good with it um for me like if I had to choose who would play the Joker I know a lot of people want William Defoe, which William Defoe would be great but it'd be kind of weird to have him in it if, when he's an Aquaman. <laughs> you know. But if I had to choose, like, I would go with Pennywise, dude. Like, I would go with that guy. That guy uh, would be great. If I had to choose for Two Face Harvey Dent, uh, Dan Deha, I think is his name. Uh, Dan Deha, or whatever his name is. Uh, he was in uh, Chronicle. Like, he played the. The, the villain in Chronicle. I think he would be great as uh, Harvey Dent. He was in... Uh, I think he was also in Spider-Man 2. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 film. I always thought he would be great as Harvey Dent. Because... He... Has that sort of like this... Look... Like, he, to me, I think he would be great as Harvey Dent because he could play, um, this character who's sort of trying to hold everything together. Like, he's trying to hold his sanity together. And, you know, for me, I think he would just be that good of a character to play Harvey Dent. Because Harvey Harvey Dent is that character who's trying to project this image of himself. Like, he's perfectly sane. He can hold everything together, but at the same time, you see his mind fight with itself. Like, this duality, like, yeah, type of thing. And... You know, for me, like, he, the actor, uh, Dan DeHa, I think is his name, he could do that. He could, he could play Harvey Dent. And I, you know, for me, like, when it comes to Harvey Dent, um, I, I always wanted to see this, you know, the type of film where you slowly see Harvey Dent. Like, you see Harvey Dent in one film, then in the, towards the end of it, you see him become Two-Face. And that's the one thing that always bothered me, was I always wanted to see an actual Two-Face movie. And I know there's going to be some people like, Batman Forever. <laughs> but, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I loved Batman Forever when I was a kid, but 
right now, I, I really want to see a Two Face movie where you see Harvey fight with himself. You see him like talk to himself, like like two two people talking to himself, but it's the same person. <laughs> and uh, you know, like you know. That's that's just sort of one of the things. Uh, one thing I want to point out, which is pretty cool, for speaking of Batman Forever and the Burton Batman films and stuff, if you're a Funko Pop collector like me, uh, they recently released uh, the Batman film series Funko Pops. So let me look it up. I think they're all out now. Uh, See, so you got the Batman 89 Funko Pop. You got the... Uh, let me see. Oh, the the 30th. Um, this month. you get They have the uh, Batman Returns Catwoman Funko Pop that's coming out. Which looks really, really cool, by the way. You got the Mr. Freeze from Batman and Robin. You got the Jack Nicholson Joker Funko Pop coming out. You got the Penguin Funko Pop from Batman Returns. And you got the Riddler from Batman Forever, Jim Carrey. You know. Jim Carrey, I always thought would be one of those. And of course, you got the Harvey Dent Two-Face uh, Funko Pop from Batman Forever, uh, Tommy Lee Jones, coming out, which is really cool. I, you know, for me, I would, I'm, for me, I'm gonna buy some of them. I have to, like, I, especially Batman Returns, like, that's one of my favorite films of the Batman movies, you know. And I, I don't get me wrong, I, I am definitely gonna buy the Mister Freeze one. Um. <laughs> uh, because I, Mr. Freeze is one of my favorite villains. Uh, not one of my, he's not, I don't really view him as a villain. He's an anti-hero. <laughs> that's what kind of, that's kind of how he is. But yeah, I, I am definitely going to buy the Mr. Freeze one as well. Um, even though Arnold Schwarzenegger ruined it, where when I was a kid, I watched it. I was just like so disappointed. <laughs> I, if I still like I I when uh when I when me and my sister hung out with my cousins when we spent the night over at my cousins they watched Titanic and I went to go watch Batman and Robin because I'd rather watch that film. I mean don't get me wrong, I watched the beginning of it of Titanic and Bill Paxton was like one of my favorite actors and I was just like that's Bill from Twister <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that. That's who. That's who's uh, one of my favorite actors. And I did see the tweet. Someone uh, it was trend trending on Twitter was people want to see a Twister two now. Um, a lot of people, you know, want to see that. I really don't. I'll be honest with you. I I really, really, really don't want to see a Twister two film. I. You know, I really love the movie Twister, and for me, I, I really don't want to see a sequel. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. Mainly is Bill Paxton and Philip Seymour Hoffman are not with us. They passed on. It just wouldn't be right. It just would not be right to see, you know, them do a Twister sequel. It just, it would not be right. Because Bill Paxton and Philip Seymour Hoffman, you know, were the standouts of it. I mean, not, I mean, everybody was a standout in the movie. But when you think of iconic lines <laughs> of Twister, you immediately think of those two because they said crazy things. And I mean, the one actress who was Bill's girlfriend. Who's a psychiatrist? We got cows, <laughs> and of course, 
did anybody see an F5? And of course the guy would be like, and that's like the finger of God. <laughs> I mean, those are like iconic lines. <laughs> and of course, I mean, with Philip Seymour Hoffman, you had the suck zone. The suck zone. The twister catches you and sucks you up. <laughs> like, I, I, for me, I don't even know what the fuck that even means. <laughs> But that was like one of the, you know, or the extreme, man, it's the extreme. Like, those are iconic lines from the movie. Like, you just can't help but look at it and you're like, that makes no sense, but damn, that's good. <laughs> but, yeah, it makes, now I, now I want to watch the Twister movie. Shit, I haven't watched it in a while. Now it makes me want to watch the movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, those were. It's one of my favorite films. Like, um, I have like a top ten, and majority of them Batman films. But Bad News Bears, Twister, and um, you know, what was that other movie I watched? Uh, Space Jam, Space Jam. Yeah, those are like my favorite films and stuff. And Willy Wonka, I have to give an honorable mention. I. I love the the classic Gene Wilder Willy Wonka film like that. That is one of my favorites. Uh, did I ever see the Burton one? I did. Um, as much as I love Tim Burton's movies and Johnny Depp is a you know one of the best actors, I just did not like it. <laughs> I, I I I I love the classic Willy Wonka movie. Um, you know, I, I would love to see Tim Burton and Johnny Depp reunite to do a movie. Like, it's been a while. It's been, I think, since uh, Dark Shadows they haven't done a movie together. Um, I would love to see them do a movie. Like, I wish they would have done Invisible Man. That's one film I wish they would have done. <laughs> um, you know, I think Burton and Depp would just kill it. With Invisible Man, they would have just knocked it out of the ballpark. That or Frankenstein or, you know. Uh, when it comes to Dracula, I still think Christian Bale should play Count Dracula. Like, just my opinion of it. Um, you know, it's just, that's kind of how it is. Like, that's just, you know. But when it comes to, like, comic book movies, like, I know... Uh, I know Tim Burton was going to do Superman Lives, which is just... Part of me wants to see that movie for some odd reason. Um, so anyway... Uh, anyway, uh, speaking of Scarecrow... It's been revealed that Batwoman, the Batwoman TV series, revealed that Scarecrow could be the villain for season two. Let's get to that article. Mm-hmm. <laughs> CBR reports that sorry I had to burp new reports suggest that Batman villain Jonathan Crane aka Scarecrow will help introduce the new Batwoman lead to replace Ruby Rose's Kate Kane new reports suggest that the fan favorite Batman villain Jonathan Crane aka the Scarecrow will set up Ruby Rose's Batwoman replacement industry insider Daniel Richman told the direct that Crane will play into Kane, the the arc of Kane's successor and that casting is underway. 
which reports is that they're circling a Riverdale star to replace Ruby Rose. <clears throat> Explaining that Crane will introduce the Crane will be introduced as the, will introduce a new Batwoman. The site claims that Scarecrow is responsible for the death of Ryan Wilder's mother, which spurs her into taking up the mantle of Batwoman. And there's also more fuel to the fire that Kate Kane will die in the next run of episodes to leave the door open for Wilder to suit up as the Batwoman. That she steals Batwoman's suit to take vengeance on the Scarecrow. Um, I will throw this one out there. They should not kill Kate Kane from the show. I think them killing that character off would be a big big mistake but you know CW's probably going to do it uh, but it would be a huge mistake to kill off a character like that um, you know it, it was a mistake in my opinion when they did Birds of Prey they killed off the TV show Birds of Prey when they killed off Selena Kyle Catwoman where they had Clayface kill her Again, that was a huge, huge mistake. I mean, I know they did it in the comics where when Helena becomes uh, Robin in one part where the current, you know, in, in New 52, Earth 2, you know, Catwoman died and stuff. And Batman, of course, sacrificed himself and, you know, that was a huge, huge mistake. Because, you know, uh, I mean, imagine if they did the show, uh, Birds of Prey, and Selena Kyle was a supporting character in the show. Retired, you know, but but also giving uh, Helena the motherly advice of being a hero and stuff. That would be really, really a beautiful thing to see and stuff. And, you know, for me, you know, what bothered me with the show, the way they did it was... They really didn't give... They gave Alfred, like... I mean... Alfred was a big part of the show. Um, you know, Alfred was sort of like the... Uh, Alfred was the grandfather. I was going to say sort of, but Alfred is the grand the grandfather. Who gave Helena, you know... Advice and guidance and... You know... I wish they would have just not killed him in the comics. Like, Fuck. Why do they always have to do that? Like, I, now it makes me want to see Alfred hold Helena when Helena's a baby. Fuck you, Tom King. <laughs> I kind of want to see that now. <laughs> Alfred holding Helena and stuff. And Helena when she's like a little kid calling him Grandpa, you know. I want to fucking see that now. I wanted to see that. But anyway, um, while Rose uh, was lead in the first season of the Arrowverse show and appeared in both El Elseworlds and Crisis on Infinite Earth crossovers, fans were shocked to learn that the star was stepping down from the role of Kate Kane ahead of season two, although showrunner Caroline Dries admitted that she nearly went she nearly went down the soap opera route by casting someone new to play Kane. Batwoman will. Batwoman is set to introduce someone new to take the mantle of the mask vigilante. I still think it should be. As a comic book nerd, as a nerd as a you know as I am, I still think. They should have went with Renee Montoya. They just should have just went with Renee Montoya as Batwoman, but instead, nope. As for Wilder, it's unclear uh, if this covers for a character in the comics. She will be a unique creation for the Arrowverse, just like John Diggle, Maya Queen Smoke, and Sarah Lance. That said, while there will be, there have been multiple Robins and Batgirls, the name Batwoman is the only one that has been taken by Kate Kane, which kind of makes it... It's going to be one of those things, like... You know, when you bring in Wilder to be Batwoman, you are going to have to sell this 
to a lot of Batwoman fans, that is going to be the most difficult sell. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see them try to sell it to a lot of Batwoman fans. And I would love to hear from fans of Batwoman of what they think of this. I really, really do want to hear from them. I really want to hear what they think of it. Because it's their character. It's like, you know, I, I've always said, like, Batman is my character. But even though DC and Warner Brothers will say, like, you don't own it. But it's my character. I love Batman. And, you know, when it comes to Batman, I'm always, like, giving my two cents of what I think of it. And when they do something, like, when they brought in uh, Robert Pattinson as Batman, I seen him in good times uh lighthouse i think he could handle the character i know a lot of people you know will say like well you know you're you know you, you like ben affleck's batman yeah but robert pattinson's gonna be batman and i look forward to his interpretation i i, I said this once to people through the 80 plus years of batman through the live actions from the film serial to the TV show to the animation to live action movies, we've seen different eras and different interpretations of Batman. Um, with Robert Pattinson, it's going to be a new interpretation to a character that's larger than life. And, you know, Batwoman you know, is sort of on the same level as Batman. Batwoman's been around for many years, different character interpretations, different eras. But Kate Kane, Batwoman of the current era, is an iconic character for people who look at her. You know. Now, you have a new character who's taken that mantle... Good luck selling that. <laughs> because there's always going to be people who are going to be like, you know, I liked Kate Kane as Batman, a Batwoman. Kate Kane is Batwoman. It's going to be a difficult thing for, you know, audiences to, to, uh, to sell to. I mean, I honestly think Robert Pattinson, of course, Robert Pattinson playing Batman, he's going to win people over uh, as Batman. Is there going to be people who are going to be still on the fence of it? Yeah, but, you know, you have to understand their point of view. Like, Batman to them is a different interpretation from Pattinson's. But I look forward to seeing what Robert Pattinson has. Um, as for the writers and stuff, like, good luck to them on selling that. Um, but anyway, Scarecrow has played an important part in the Batman Rogues Gallery. He was uh, featured several times in live action from the three Christopher Nolan Batman movies. The Fox series Gotham, which, in my opinion, Gotham had the best look of the Scarecrow ever. <laughs> Good luck on top of that one, because that look of Scarecrow in Gotham was fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like that that to me is how Scarecrow looked um, Crane and the Sphere Toxin also played into Rocksteady's acclaimed Arkham games ultimately uh, there have been plenty of rumors flying around that about Batwoman will be handled but will handle a new lead in season 2 also reports that Riverdale's Vanessa Morgan could replace Rose but Ushering in a new lead so early uh, in the show's lifespan is no easy task. However, using a villain with a much history as Scarecrow would be a good place to start. Yes, uh, Vanessa Morgan, who uh, was in Riverdale, never heard of her. Uh, I seen Riverdale like I seen the first episode of Riverdale, and I just was like, I can't get into the show. <laughs> <laughs> I I really can't. Um, it's kind of funny though. Like my, it's actually funny though. My my nieces, my oldest nieces are my oldest nieces and nephew are like fans of Riverdale. Like, which is weird. Um, they never read Archie though. It's kind of funny though. Uh, they never read Archie comics, and I've read Archie comics when I was a kid, and 
I didn't really like it. I just I I don't know what it was. It was just like I don't I don't know what it was. Like I I love it's kind of funny though. I love Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um the comics and the cartoon and the live action TV series like and the new one, the new uh Sabrina on Netflix. I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny though. I I was never a big fan of Archie, but I love Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um like the new like the new Netflix series that they did, I was kind of hard to sell for sell to because I love the classic live action show. Uh Salem is like my favorite character, the talking cat. Um and when I seen the live action show and when I seen Salem show up, I was just like so like Oh my God, Salem! <laughs> like, like seeing the show without him, it was just seeing the episode, a couple episodes, uh, seeing that episode without him, it was just so weird. Like, I was like, "Where's the cat?" <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I was just so happy to see him on the show, and I, I love the the show. Um, you know, the show's really, I think you know, by far, by far one of the best, like, um, so, you know, for me, like, I, I can't wait to see what happens next for Sabrina, the Teenage Witch and stuff, like, I can't wait, um, but the Riverdale show, I know Skeet Ulrich is leaving because he said he's bored (laughs) of the show, um, but I, I honestly think when um, when the dad died, uh, Luke Perry, who was in the show, when Luke Perry died, I think that's when the show should have just ended because Luke Perry is Luke Perry is, is a good fucking actor. Like he he was he was a great actor. I never cared for nine oh two one oh. I just my. My oldest sister was like a huge fan of it, and she was like crushed when he died because she had a crush on him because she loved the show and she had a massive crush on Luke Perry, and she was like upset when he died <laughs> and stuff. And uh, you know, it was it was kind of it was I think for me like when he died, I think the show should have just ended because you know he. I take it he was like a big part of the show like he was a huge support character and a very important character and I think when I take it when he died it was just sort of like it sort of like killed the show I don't mean be disrespectful but it sort of killed the show but uh, but his I have to say this his son uh, Luke Perry's son is a really good wrestler by the way uh, Jungle Boy uh, is the name of the <laughs> is his ring name. He's a really good he's a really good wrestler. He kind of reminds me of um, he reminds me of Kevin Von Erich for some odd reason. Like I, I of course watched you know uh, World Class Championship Wrestling on the WWE Network and Jungle Boy sort of reminds me of uh, Kevin Von Erich for some odd reason. But anyway, back to Batwoman. Uh, Cinema Spot reports that the network is Ian Morgan to star as Ryan Wilder, the brand new character that is being created to take the mantle of Batwoman after Ruby Rose's sudden departure. The site reports Morgan will do screen tests for the role and with other members of the Batwoman cast. So I take it they are really wanting to bring her in. Morgan recently made the news where she expressed frustration in regard to black characters being used as sidekicks on Riverdale. She said that there is a significant pay gap between herself and her castmates and that she will not take on any more roles unless they accurately depict black people. So I take it that's why she really wants the role of Batwoman is I'm taking the network really wants to keep her around because they see value in her and they really want to do things right. Uh Batwoman's showrunner Caroline Dries discussed the uh reasoning behind the creating a new character. 
of course we already talked about that how you know they didn't you know they want to not you know they want to sort of address the elephant in the room while while there's you know no Kate Kane there's this character instead so anyway uh, we're wrapping up the show um, tomorrow's show we'll actually be talking about something I really I did some research in uh, which is a live show <laughs> that I take it people sort of forgot about and it's called Batman Live uh, Batman Live was of course the touring stage show introducing theatrical circus and stage magic elements the show, of course, focused on the DC Comics superhero, Batman. And, of course, debuted in 2011 in the Manchester Evening News area. Arena, sorry, arena. And it's been with two and a half years, and it's making, of course, cost $7.5 million to make. So we're going to be talking about that show uh, tomorrow. Batman Live. Uh, so I can't wait to talk about it. It's going to be one of those fun uh, shows that I actually got to see like video of it on YouTube, and I was just like, "How did I not know this show?" <laughs> so anyway, uh, we'll be back tomorrow to talk about that, and uh, hope everyone has a safe. Uh, you know, safe day, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow, and uh, hope everyone does a, hope everyone has a wonderful day, and so, see you all tomorrow.